Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Praise God. He's faithful. He's awakened us. He's prepared a table for us. And all we have to do is sit and eat. He's provided everything we need. We can be confident that we will lack nothing if we will just confess to His Son, Jesus Christ, and to obey God's Word. Follow Him. Allow Him to work in our lives. He's our refuge. He's our strength. He's all we need. And that's why I'm here this morning, so I can study about God, His desire for my life, so that I can understand the decisions that I have to make during the day, so that I can make the right decisions and follow Him and do His will and be open to the leadership and the training that the Holy Spirit is performing to transform me into the likeness of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Father in Heaven, we come to you this morning so thankful. So thankful for who you are. You are the great I Am. You're all that we need. You're the blessing that has created all that exists out of love. We can see your love in your creation. We can see your strength and power. We can see your intelligence. We can see who you are by what you created. You're great. You're massive. You're strong. You're merciful. You even created little ants and you love them. It's amazing the depth and the breadth of who you are. We thank you, Father. And we study to be more like your son, Jesus. Please help us. Help us through your Holy Spirit to dissect, discern, that to gain wisdom from your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, today's daily devotional is from the book of Jeremiah. This is Divine Punishment on False Prophets. Jeremiah 14, verses 14 through 16. <clears throat> Jeremiah 14, 14 reads, Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy, the prophets prophecy lies in thy name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision, a divination, and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them, them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters. For I will pour their wickedness upon them. My God, judgment on the false prophet. God is, is merciful, but his mercy 
has limits. Because God is a just God and you reap what you sow. Okay, today's lesson is titled Reject Deceivers and Demonic Doctrines. The central truth for this lesson is that Christians are to contend for the faith through God's word in the power of Jesus Christ. The focus of the lesson is to discern and reject false teaching through the power of Jesus Christ. Our evangelism emphasis is that Jesus Christ is the truth that sets the captives free. And our golden text says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. And so our introductory uh, commentary says, After three years of faithful ministry in the city of Ephesus, Paul decided to travel to Jerusalem. In his farewell message, he warned, Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. And this is Acts chapter 20 verses 28 through 30 in the King James Version of the Bible. The Gospel tells us that within the inner circle of Jesus' followers, Satan was at work. Jesus warned Peter, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat from the book of Luke 22:31. Also, Luke tells us Satan entered into Judas, who later betrayed Jesus with a kiss. After the day of Pentecost, a prominent member of the Jerusalem church, Ananias, was rebuked by Peter. Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? And that's from Acts chapter 5, verse 3. Demonic spirits never cease their attempts to destroy the church, but they have a lot of help. Although our warfare is against the spiritual forces of wickedness, like it says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, we must be willing to confront those flesh and blood human beings who collude with evil spirits to betray the mission of the kingdom of God. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 20. Okay, we'll start off our lesson in section 1, uh, Destructive Doctrines. And section 1A is titled, Hypocrites and Liars. And our reference is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. And it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith given heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared 
with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, with which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. <clears throat> and so the commentary says Timothy was Paul's spiritual son and longtime missionary companion. In one of their journeys, as they were passing through Ephesus, Paul asked Timothy to stay in order to challenge false teachers who were threatening the stability of the Ephesian church. Paul's primary concern in writing this letter was to promote a sincere faith and sound doctrine, to oppose the false teachers was to wage the good warfare. As Paul was writing, the Spirit spoke. The Holy Spirit speaks to the church through words of knowledge, words of wisdom, prophetic words, and the interpretation of tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 8 through 10. Timothy was well acquainted with the voice of the Spirit because his ministry had been commissioned by prophetic utterance. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. Paul's words, the Spirit speaketh, are the equivalent of thus saith the Lord first used by Moses in Exodus 4.22 and used 419 times by the Old Testament prophets. Paul's words have the same prophetic weight as those spoken by Moses and all the prophets. The Spirit spoke to Paul about the latter time. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. This does not mean the Spirit was speaking about something that would occur in the future. For false teaching was happening during the period of time in which Paul was writing. Two leaders of the Ephesian church, Hymenicus and Alexander, had been expelled by Paul because they failed to keep the faith. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 19 through 20 Prophetic utterances often speak of the latter times or the latter days as imminent so the hearer will understand that the matter is urgent. See Matthew chapter 3 verse 2 and Mark chapter 1 verse 15. <sighs> the urgent matter was that many believers were falling away from the faith because they were paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. See 1 Timothy 4.1. The Greek word aposte, or falling away, means believers were apostatizing, rebelling against sound doctrine. Paul presented an early creed, a statement of essential Christian belief. In 1 Timothy Chapter 3, verse 16. It says, He 
who was revealed in the flesh was vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, and taken up in glory. A creed represents the standard of sound words. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Paul insisted the glorious gospel is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And those who teach contrary to sound doctrine are demonically inspired. Many Ephesian believers rejected the sound doctrine of Paul and Timothy in favor of the doctrine of devils inspired by seducing spirits. See 1 Timothy 4 and 1. The false teachers interpreted the law, the Old Testament, in ways that challenged sound doctrine. Paul affirmed the veracity of the law, but rebuked those who used the law to promote strange doctrines. <clears throat> the false teachers exploited two issues, marriage and food. The false teachers were pro prohibiting marriage. <clears throat> In other words, they were prohibiting sexual relations. Several Jewish and Greek sects insisted that all sexual relations contaminated the human spirit because all matter, including the human body, was evil. The Christian faith prohibited sexual immorality or fornication, adultery, incest, and homosexuality. See Acts 15 verses 20 verses 29 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 verse 13 verse 18 and even encourage celibacy in certain circumstances see Matthew 19 verses 11 and 12 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 26 but the male female sexual relationship within marriage was encouraged 1 Corinthians 7, 1 through 5, and Hebrew 13, 4. False teachers were also forbidding certain foods. 1 Timothy 4, 3. Dietary restrictions were a contentious issue in the apostolic church. See Acts 10, verses 9 through 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 23 through 33. Many insisted that Gentile converts must abide by Jewish dietary regulations. But the reading of Jesus in Mark chapter 7 verses 18 and 19 and the judgment of the Jew Jerusalem council in Acts chapter 15 verses 19 through 20 insisted all foods were acceptable with the exceptions of food used in idol worship. Paul declared every creature of God is good for human nourishment. 1 Timothy 4.4 4. Why do these issues matter? Food restrictions closed the gospel of Christ to the Gentiles. Sexual morality matters because our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. See 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 16 through 17. Missional and moral integrity are, are essential to the gospel. These false teachers were lying hypocrites with seared consciences. 1 Timothy 4 2. The Greek word translated as seared is a medical term that refers to the catheterization of an organ, rendering it insensitive to pain. Paul accused the false teachers of not practicing their own prohibitions, 
because they had no moral sensitivity. The false teachers had become so hard-hearted and dull-minded that they were unaware they had become the human agents of demonic deceit. See Ephesians chapter 4 verses 18 through 19. The word of God is sometimes perverted and uh, the flesh of men motivate them to pervert the word of God for their own use. It's a selfish act. The truth of God is the most blessed gift you can give someone. And to distort or lie is the most demonic thing that you could do. To deprive someone of the truth is to murder that truth. I thank you for your time this morning. I, I pray that something that I read encourages you to seek a closer relationship with our Father and His Son and His Holy Spirit. Have a blessed day.